so it's time to leave the waking world behind yet again and enter the nightmare realm of Fatal Frame 3. So starting out in hour six, we find ourselves back in control of Ray, where we left her off last time after having fought that sadistic little child. And with our new key in hand, I guess it's just left to, uh, up to us to figure out where we need to go next. quickly spot you walking off towards that door that we saw him walk through back in our daydream. And that door was roped off before, we couldn't get through it, but tonight is a little bit different. Something causes our camera to react. get a mysterious image of what appears to be four of those men in white that we have fought before. These are going to be a tad bit different though and they are going to be our goal as they are the key to unlocking this door and following you. Now before we go after them though, there is something waiting at the tree. get a musty piece of film to develop later. But we see a mournful looking faceless man. It seems he's a bit amiss about something, and we will be finding out more about that later on in this update. Needless to say, it does have some connection to this tree here, but... well, nothing else left to do here but just to keep pressing on. Upon entering this corridor, we see some new splotches of blood. So we might have missed out on something pretty grisly going on in here, but it does leave us a trail to follow. And behind the dresser here, we find a cowering man. Outside of his plea, he does leave behind a reel of film. This is going to be very helpful in helping us find those four men. In addition to that, there are a few New Game Plus hidden ghosts in this chapter. First one being in between these basketed dolls here. And it's a Shrine Maiden. May not be the one that we fought before, but we'll be finding out that there are quite a few of those Shrine Maidens. In addition to that, it may be a bit hard to pick up, but there is the distant sound of Koto playing, and we know that there is a nearby Koto in the Kimono Rune up here. If we are extra cautious, behind the screen here we can take another quick snapshot of the woman brush. I'm sure she won't mind.
Yeah, nice little trap there. I don't think that actually counts, counts toward the spirit list, but it does allow us to see a few more of the woman brushing's attacks. Now she will do that charge there. That doesn't count as a shutter chance, and I think it just is a means for her to get closer to us. So she does the normal charge. Probably the best opportunity to do the most damage. Also, at this point in the game, she does gain an additional attack where she will shoot out darts of hair. It's not the most damaging attack, but it can be pretty annoying to deal with as it doesn't leave her open for a fatal frame chance. Also on the hall here, we see near that closet where that herbal medicine stash was is some blood waiting for us. That leads into a pretty innocuous fight with a man in white. Thankfully at this point in the game, you hopefully have built up some damage with your camera, and you have been practicing with your fatal frames, so the men in white are even less trouble than they were to begin with. That isn't to say this entire chapter is going to be a cakewalk. It has its fair share of difficulties, but we'll be getting to that soon enough. There is just one more optional thing to get out of the way in this hallway here. You may have noticed this snowy little hole here, but on this chapter, we can actually look up and find a hidden ghost. And this grisly face has a somewhat depressing story that goes along with it, so I'm going to go ahead and look at that really quick in our ghost list. The child in the snow. I guess her mother died buried in snow, and likewise she buried herself alive in the snow. Pretty, pretty morbid all around. Though that does leave me a question whether or not that's something that happened at this original location, or if it was another dreamlike situation. It's a bit hard to tell with these ghosts. But, since we do have that new film reel, and it is very important to this chapter of the game and figuring out where those four men are, we're going to go ahead and head back to the projector room. good news is, it's a very short walk via the bell hallway. Get back! Stay away! Also, that allows us to trigger that event. And we see there is quite a bit of blood that wasn't there before leading up to that doorway. So many grisly scenes waiting for us now. But if we check the door... We find that there is some force pressing on it from the other side. Which means that we are going to be unable to access this room for quite a bit of this chapter, which is going to be pretty inconvenient. So we get our attention drawn skyward to a as yet unknown platform above us, but we're not going to worry about that for right now. Instead, it's, uh, it's time to watch some movies. Now before we get to the one that we picked up on this chapter, we did pick up one on the previous chapter, so let's give that a viewing. Too much to gain from it, just a large sense of desolation. Some 
somewhat familiar figures. But let's get on to the important piece of film, the sacrificial pillars. Now the reason this film is so important is it shows us directly the four locations that we'll need to find those four gentlemen. Now even though they're a bit hard to make out, they aren't too difficult to factor in where they might be. A lot of these locations are somewhat obvious. Now before we head to our first location, which is pretty close by, we're going to go ahead and pick up that little stash of Type 14 film, as we are going to be dealing with quite a bit of combat. But our first closest destination is going to be in that uh, small storage room underneath the stairs where I think we first got the alarm function for our camera. So get another vanishing ghost bringing our attention to a doorway we might not have noticed beforehand. And we will be visiting pretty much every location that we see in the game, so it's a good idea to keep all of those in mind in the future. But in the stained corridor we do hear some mysterious whispering, but doesn't seem like it's mentioning anything to do with what we might be investigating. It seems to do more with some surviving a crash. Well, we have a good idea who that might be, but we'll worry about that in just a little bit. We have a much bigger worry to deal with. Yeah, the blood that was previously only seeable through our camera is now very much visible in normal sight, though there's no one waiting for us here, so maybe we have the wrong location. Oh no. Who's a Say hello to our first of four targets. This is an engraved man. He has more health than a man in white. He has more dangerous attacks than the man in white, or the faceless man for that matter. But. He only has one real attack to worry about, and that's that lower swipe, but he does leave behind some very useful information in these tomes. Now, we find out that these men in white are actually part of a larger family of carpenters who were specifically requisitioned over their entire lives to deal with the upkeep of the Kuze Shrine. And this involved being willing to give up their lives for the shrine. Now whether that was just for mere spiritual reasons or to keep whatever secrets in the Kuze shrine were meant to be kept here forever. Yeah, we, we find out that those men in the wall from before, some of them apparently volunteered to do that. And I say some of them as, well, you can probably guess that not everybody was fine with being slaughtered inside of the shrine and encased in the walls. But yeah, if you couldn't guess from before, this whispering is from Miss Takagawa, who we haven't heard from in a few chapters. We've seen her skulking around the house a bit, but... Seems that she is now full in effect in some of the rooms she was previously in, in some of the previous chapters. Now, it doesn't seem that there is anything immediately obvious in this blinds room, but... I don't think that doll was there before in the closet. Way. 
Poor Miss Takagawa just can't leave us alone. But I do apologize for the seemingly endless whispering here. I, I do promise it won't go on for the rest of this area. But it does really cover the fact that Miss Yoshinoya Takagawa is pretty much in an endless state of guilty torment. I do hope that at some point over the progression of the game we can really do something to help her out. But in this partition room there are a few differences. It seems this far hall this far room is now blocked off to us, but it does allow for a change in camera, allowing us to finally visibly see this stash that was hidden from our view before. In addition to that seem there is some ghostly presence that is now waiting in this room back here. And it is highly important that you do take this particular picture. That's another picture of Miss Takagawa. But if you do miss out on that picture, it does block some things later on in the game, and more importantly, it does cause that horrible, incessant whispering to stop, so that's probably the most important piece. But our next destination is pretty close by, and that is the main foyer of the Manor of Sleep. We do get a somewhat dangerous ambush in this tiny hallway from a man in white. Still, in comparison to the engraved men, the men in white are very much not a danger. We know we're on the right track, as there is more blood waiting for us. Use me, my body, as a sacrifice. But yeah, as we continue on, we find more and more so that the Moria family was very much willing to do whatever it took to keep this shrine up. And if you're wondering why that might be, whether they were driven crazy or brainwashed by some horrible cult, well, we will find out as soon as we take down this man. Yeah, in this particular tome, we find out a bit more regarding the ritual about the priestess that has the wonder for eternity encased in the Rift Shrine, or the Shrine of Sleep. And they do this as she houses this horrible thing called the Rift, which, I guess if it gets out, will cause a horrible thing to happen, much like every other ritual that we've come across in the Fatal Frame series. And overall, there are a lot of parallels that I am starting to see between the Sacrificial Pillars and the Kusabi from the Fatal Frame 2 game. Just this whole series of pre-ritual rituals regarding pain and suffering and torment. I mean, the reason that we see all this blood is because these engraved men chase down their fellow carpenters and hack them to bits with hatchets. But all that aside, in this large sunken fireplace room, we do have a couple of vanishing ghosts to deal with. They can be pretty easy to miss. First one is as we reach the top of the stairs, in the distant window. Yeah, it's really hard to see, but there is someone peeping in on us. 
now. So you may notice that the save point has gone out, and that is due to the fact there is an enemy nearby. A very optional enemy, and it's one I do not feel like dealing with because it's Miss Takagawa and her ghostly shadows in that very narrow corridor. And it's honestly a headache and not worth the point. So we're going to go ahead and head over to the elevated door over here because we actually now have the key for it. Though before I head over there, there is another New Game Plus hidden ghost. Very, very easy to miss this, as between the pillars and the screens here. We find the mother and daughter that we fought and learned about earlier on in the game. In addition to that, there is an optional ghost that you can miss out on. Not really sure how you're supposed to know about that ahead of time, but... Yeah, it's not part of the spirit list, it's only a few additional points if you need them. But up here we find a lock with a bellflower on it. And wouldn't you know it, that is the key that we found back in Ray's previous chapter in that horrible impaled doll room. These people must be sacrificed. And we find an incredibly odd room waiting for us. First thing that brings up our attention is where that vanishing ghost was looking. And if we look down in this hole here, we we'll see what appears to be a sleeping quarters with some hidden ghosts. Yeah, it's more of those men in white, those carpenters that were destined to be sacrificed for the good of the shrine. But we find a very important item hidden away in the drawers here. And it's Ray's first opportunity for Type 90 film. Along with that, we find some unnecessary papers, but weighing down those papers is... One of those key stones that we need to open a door. And along with that, we also find our first useful power lens. The blast lens is something returning from Fatal Frame 2, and simply enough, it will increase the damage of a particular shot by probably about 25%. Now granted it does use up two spirit orbs rather than slow using up one, but the additional damage it does is incredibly useful and so I'm going to go ahead and pop that sucker on. Now as we also do have some additional points, might as well go ahead and increase max value and sensitivity. I would increase blast, but I think I'd rather get down the basic functionalities first before powering up any lenses. And really all we needed up here was that stone, but there's a little bit more to investigate in this odd, odd room. First and foremost, down this long staircase here, we do see there is something of a beaten up opening leading into those sleeping quarters we saw before, but able to get in there due to that weird little dresser there. And further down, underneath this scaffolding, we have another reappearing stash of Type 14 film. Now even though this area may seem out of the way, it's important to keep an idea of that stash for later on. Especially consider when you find this odd locked door. 
magma. And that is all we need to find in this area of the manor. Our next destination is going to be a pretty long trek, to be honest, as it's going to require going all the way back to the woman brushing's kimono room. And I will be making a jump cut soon enough, but there is one more point of interest on our journey back there. Another vanishing ghost, and a somewhat familiar figure that we saw in Ray's attic. Now along with that vanishing ghost, there was one little Easter egg, I suppose, that I missed out on before, which if you look further up the wall here, you see a water stain that kind of looks like a face. Creepiness aside. Like I said, our next destination is going to be back here in this kimono room. Now, I did point out the other two doors beforehand, and we're now going to be using one of those doors, as it does connect to that upper raft area that we saw the figure walking across uh, quite a bit a while ago. This leads us into another somewhat annoying section as we are forced to go extremely slow. It's very much akin to the Fatal Frame 1 rafter section. But we do have another New Game Plus hidden ghost waiting in this little box up here. it's another Shrine Maiden. Now, speaking of Shrine Maidens, guess where is a horrible place to fight them? If you sit up in the rafters, well, you'd be kind of wrong. It's honestly not that bad. As long as you've gotten down their whole pattern of swooping around and lunging at you and Popping up through the floor, they're really not too, too bad. And for our trouble, she leaves behind yet another one of those keystones we need. Now, outside of getting that keystone, there is another important reason for slowly walking along these rafters. As waiting on the other end, we will find a locked door that needs one of those sleeping stones that we found previously. And yet again, nothing too difficult to figure out here. Waiting behind the door is seemingly lots of nothing, but we do find at least one item up here. It's another film reel. We'll be waiting to view this in the next update. But we also find a mysterious hole to peek through. Not enough blood. Need more blood. Even though I have some apprehension about 
ever venturing to that room, I'm going to say it's pretty much an inevitability. But all in all, even though this may have seemed like a pretty optional trek, it does bring up one of the problems with this particular chapter, in that it's got a very strict line of events that you need to get down. First and foremost, you would have had to investigate that door downstairs to trigger the figure walking up here, to then trigger the shrine maiden that you need to attack, which allows you to then open that nearby door, and then as you're re-trekking back along the rafters, which normally I would cut out, it's, it's very slow and tedious, as we progress along this final little stretch here, So there was another survivor. It triggers that faceless man downstairs. And though it may not seem immediately evident, he is heading towards that door that was previously being pushed on from the other side beforehand, and that's where we are going to need to go next, but overall, even though it does seem like you might have multiple options and ways to go, the game very much railroads you into going down a very, very specific path that is very, very obtuse to say the least. It's very easy to overlook some of these triggers, like if you didn't go investigate that door that was being pushed on, you would never have triggered that figure upstairs, and so on and so forth, and I don't know, it's a, it's a bit more obtuse than it needs to be. Please help me. All that aside, we get a somewhat dangerous ambush against two men in white. Especially when you're getting attacked by two different ghosts and they're both kind of triggering fatal frames at the same time, it can be a bit hard to gauge which one is actually causing the fatal frame and which one's going to be knocked back by the effect. one of the many dangers fighting multiple ghosts in Fatal Frame 3. But yeah, if we now go check on this door down here, I think we will find that it is now open for our exploration. So we find our third engraved man. Allows us a good opportunity to show off the blast lens. And allows us a little bit more knowledge with this new tome. Now here we learn that the top shrine carpenters, which is mostly the Moria family, were called in to erect this shrine over the rift using these spiritual trees, and they were also requisitioned to use their bodies as sacrificial pillars to make sure everything totally went to plan. In addition to that, we find a brand new ability for Ray, the Flash ability. Now you may recall that earlier on we got the evade function for the camera, and the flash is pretty much a evade ability that you can use whenever you want, but in limited quantities and only against weaker ghosts, so all in all I don't really understand its purpose, but I will try to show it off at some point, even though for the most part it never really fits into any of my strategies. But, with that out of the way, like I said, we just have one more ghost to go, and that is going to require Ray to head into the Himuro Mansion area of the Manor of Sleep, and to do a little bit of crossover in the Miku's section of the game. 
First, though, we do have a hidden New Game Plus ghost awaiting this hallway. Up in that little doorway on the second floor. We find the faceless man. Waiting to swipe at us with his bloody hatchet, but we don't have to worry about him for right now. And the good news is, technically, we don't have to head too far into the Himuro Mansion area, but there are two optional hidden ghosts, the first one being a little bit down here in the rope hallway. It's a bit hard to tell, but there is a wrapped up body in the rafters up there. And the second one that is only available on New Game Plus is waiting in the cell where Kyrie was being held before. If we go down to where we saw the Shrine Maiden previously and look through the bars. We are able to take an image of what I assume to be the Rope Shrine Maiden that is encased in the manner of sleep. But we don't want to dawdle for too long as hanging out in the rope hallway will cause a random encounter with the rope shrine maiden and I cannot begin to describe how bad of a situation that would be, especially at this early stage in the game. You may recall at the end of this partition room when we first played as Miku, we found this door here that she couldn't open, but we now have the key to safely open the door. And we do see that these sliding block puzzles are getting a tad bit more difficult, but honestly it's still very much trial and error and there's no real repercussion for getting things wrong. the door, and we find ourselves in that sleeping quarter that we saw previously through that upper hole in the ceiling. Though I do get a tad bit confused as I don't immediately see the hole, but there it is over there. Here you will stay. Yeah, we get our final engraved man, and this one is the most dangerous of all, as he comes along with two constantly spawning men in white. The good news is, if you do happen to have that blast up and ready to go, you can make pretty quick work about it. But we get our final tome from the sh Carpenter's family. And inside we find that, I guess supposedly the rift got out, causing the horrible cataclysm for the game, which they call the unleashing. And it spilled over all into the Kuze Shrine, causing horrible damage that I'm sure we'll never have to deal with. Except you know we will, because this is a Fatal Frame game. But with that, we have now broken all the seals on that one door back in the garden area. And I just decided to get my bearings. And there's a hole in the ceiling and there is a hole in the wall over there, so... Still very odd that this manor is set up in the way it is, but... Can't really argue with dreams, I guess. And we do find some sacred water hidden away in the drawers here, but... 
More importantly enough, we are done with all this wonderful combat, so let's just make a quick jump back to the garden. It must not be opened. That priestess, the shrine must be sealed. And oddly enough, even though that cutscene made it seem like it was day outside, it seems like it might still be nighttime. So who could be telephoning us at such late an hour? Kurosawa speaking? I should have died. How lovely. Not while we're down here, we might as well go ahead and develop that film that we got. Things seem a bit amiss in the hallway. And we just keep getting these just uncomfortable visits from Miss Takagawa. I'm not sure why she's decided to leech onto us, but it's getting to be kind of annoying. Also, it was pointed out in the thread, but some portions of the house do start to get this bizarre water damage. Not sure what that could be from. But you do want to be careful as you head into the dark room, as you could scare away Miss Takagawa. But with that out of the way, we can now develop those two pictures that we took back in the manor. The first one is very important, as it does elucidate a bit more about the horrible shadows that seem to be endlessly berating Miss Takagawa. As mentioned before, it's pretty much her own guilty manifestations of all those people that died in the plane with her. In the second photo, we see something of a commemorative photo around that tree with the skewered doll, and all those carpenters that we know met a grisly fate inside the walls of the shrine. But that is all we needed to do to wrap up this night and this update, so just going to go ahead and head back upstairs as there's no books to read and use room and oddly enough if we go into Miku's room she will be very much asleep so just an odd little time for Ray to wake up I think it is a good opportunity to leave this horror behind, and hopefully you'll join me next time for more Fatal Frame 3.